What's up everybody, Greg here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. And in today's video, we're gonna be continuing our coverage on the Phantom VO 4K 990S. We've already gone over all the exterior features, the buttons and ports. We've gone over our build and how to get it into a shooting configuration. And in this video, we're gonna be going through the menus, kind of covering everything you need to know of where all the locations are for changing different settings and getting this camera set up and ready to shoot. So to start off, we're gonna go over the main interface first, sort of what you see as you're shooting, and then we'll go a little bit more into the menus later on. So starting off in the top left-hand corner, you're gonna see a little symbol here, and currently we're in the pause state or live view mode. And this means that we're just seeing what the camera's seeing, but nothing's actually happening with the internal memory. It's not recording, it's not buffering, we're not in playback, and there's nothing on the card already. This is the base state when you turn the camera on, and once you start recording, you'll start seeing some other things. The next one you might see is your full solid circle record button. This means that the camera is currently recording what's happening in front of it. There's also just a red circle that's not completely solid, it's just sort of a red ring, and this means that the camera is in the triggered state, meaning that it's recording constantly to the buffer and overwriting that, and then once you hit the trigger button on the back, it'll actually save the previous thing, so stuff that has happened before you actually hit that button. This is a good way if you're doing high speed things and you're waiting for the right moment to happen, you can keep that record going and then you can hit the trigger button and then it'll save everything that just happened up to a certain duration depending on what frame rate and resolution you're shooting in. After this trigger mode, there's two more. The first one's gonna be a green square and this means that a clip has been recorded to the internal memory and you can't do anything else until you delete it from the internal memory. And then the last one is just a green playback button and this means you're in the playback mode so you're able to review clips and then send them out to either a CFast 2.0 card or over ethernet to save them to an external hard drive. To the right of the camera state, you have some time code that just tells you the time of day. Above the time code, you have a buffer bar and a trigger point marked with that little T. The T is gonna be where the trigger point is happening. Anything before it or to the left of it is gonna be recording to the buffer always. And anything after that is gonna happen when you hit that trigger button. And you can move this trigger point around on that buffer bar to set up where you want the actual action to happen and where you wanna trigger the camera. Next to the buffer bar and trigger point, you have your frames and clip duration. So right now we're shooting at 1,000 frames a second. So we could record 5,742 frames and that's gonna take 5.7 seconds or our clip duration of 5.7 seconds. Slowed down, that's gonna be close to four minutes of footage. Underneath that, we have our CF ready, which means that the CF card is ready to record to it. We have 13 T or 13 takes, 13 clips on the card already with 162 gigabytes out of 500. So we still have over 300 gigabytes left on this card that we can record to. Right above that, if you're using a Canon EF lens or a Nikon lens, then you're gonna see an aperture as well, so you can see what your aperture readout is, and you can adjust that on the front mount like we talked about in the camera video. On the bottom, you have all of your capture settings and your camera serial number. So our serial number is 22934. We're at 1,000 frames per second. We're at 180 degree shutter angle. And then our resolution over on the right side is 4096 by 2160, so full DCI 4K. So that's your main interface for your recording. We're gonna look at the playback in a moment after we go through the menus a little more. So to get into your menus, all you're gonna do is click the wheel on the back of the camera, and that's gonna bring up your first menu. So we're in one of six the camera settings. So this is where you're gonna change all of those camera settings like your frame rate, so our speed is 1,000 frames per second. Our shutter angle is 180 degrees. We have our EI exposure index or ISO at 320 currently. Our auto exposure is off. We don't wanna do auto exposure, we wanna be able to control that. We have our white balance at 4,500 Kelvin and we have no color correction on it. We're not shooting in some like bad lighting where we need to shift from green or magenta, so we're just gonna leave that at zero. We have our resolution, which is again 4096 by 2160. And to change that, if we scroll over it, it's really nice because you can change these individually. So we can adjust that down to 2048 if we wanted to go to 2K. And then we can change a bunch of the vertical settings all the way down to 16 pixels high. And you can see we're getting a tiny, tiny sliver of light on there all the way up to 2304 to get more of a square image. I'm just gonna set this back to our 4K 2160. Underneath that, you have your camera trigger, and this is where you actually set that trigger point if you want it to happen at the end, at the beginning, or somewhere in the middle. We have sync internal, which you can change to external if you wanna sync the camera up from an external source. Auto breath off, this is your black reference, and usually you wanna turn this on 
uh, unless you have to record very quickly. But with this camera, you want to black balance as much as possible. So having that auto black balance on means every time that you hit the record button, it's going to black balance at first and then it'll switch over into that live view or trigger record mode. Going on to the next page, we're in two of six, which is our image. And this is our master gamma gain black. I would suggest leaving these alone. You have your production area and then you have your production area offset. If you wanted to try and crop it and sending out to separate monitors, you can kind of move it around and change the aspect ratio. After that, you have your zoom level, which right now it's set to fit because we want it to scale to whatever monitor we're outputting to, but you can do a one-to-one -one if you want so that you're actually outputting to the proper scale of the video. Uh, right next to that, you have color bars to be able to send color bars out to a monitor if you want to color calibrate that monitor to the camera. You have video system, which is going to be changing your output. So right now I have it set up at 1080 30p. doesn't really matter as long as your monitor can take that signal. You can set that to whatever you want. And then you have your anamorphic de-squeeze, which we have set to off because I'm not using anamorphic lenses, but you can easily just put that into 133 or 2.0 to 1. We'll leave it off and go to the next page. We're in three of six, which is our settings. And this is where you can set up five different presets. So if you're jumping around between shooting like 2000 frames a second in 1080 or 4K, or even just changing white balances a lot, you can set up presets to jump between them quickly. And the nice thing about this is it will save every single setting that you adjust. It'll save that into that preset. So if you're changing your white balance, like I said, if you're changing your resolution, your frame rates, um, even your partitions, which I'll we'll talk about a little bit later, it'll save those right in here. So you can quickly jump between those different setups. Uh, you also have your factory defaults, which will just reset the camera, but that does not reset your presets that you've made here, which is a really good thing. So you can reset your factory defaults if you're having some issue or it's glitching somehow, and you'll still have all of your presets without having to rebuild those every time. And then you also have your shutter mode, which you can either switch between rolling or global shutter. Uh, you do get some limitations with switching those over from rolling to global, like limited ISO and some other small things. So just keep that in mind when you go to switch to those. Going on to the next page is our info. So this is just a lot of specs about the camera. We have, again, our serial number, which camera it is, some different technical things about internet, IP addresses, camera temperature, fans, all of that good stuff. Uh, next one is our auto page, and this turns on a lot of the camera's auto features like auto save. So after you record a clip, it will automatically start writing to the CFast card or out through the Ethernet if you have it hooked up to a computer. I usually have this off because I want to select very specific points. I don't want it to just record every single clip to the card. It would just take a ton of space. Underneath the auto save, you have your from first to last, and that's sort of just setting up those parameters of when you want it to auto save and what part of the clips you want it to auto save. Going on to the last page, which is six of six. This is our advanced settings. And in here you can control again, your gain pedestal and gamma, but on a individual color channel level. So your red, green, and blue. You can also adjust your color space in here from rec 709 to log one or log two. These different color spaces lock you in with different ISO levels. Rec 709 kind of has a range from 320 up to 3200. Once you go into log one, you're gonna get locked in at 3200 ISO. And if you go up to log two, that's gonna lock you in at 5000 ISO. If you wanna check out how these actually perform, head over to a video that I did, which tests the camera sensor in those higher ISO performance, as well as some exposure recovery stuff. So definitely check that out if you're interested to see how those perform. Uh, next, you have your OSD on, which is your on-screen display. So that's just what your information is. This can be really helpful if you want to send a signal out from your SDI, being a clean signal, into a different type of recorder, like if you're going out to an Atomos or an Odyssey or something like that. You can record a clean feed out. So when you're actually doing playback, you can record it in there instead of going to a CFast card and just record in like a ProRes or different type of format. Next up is your CF card, uh, where you can actually format the card that's in there. So I have a bunch of clips on here, so I'm not gonna do that right now, but this is how you format the card. And then the last thing on here is your memory partitions. Now this is a really, really helpful tool for when you're trying to record a bunch of clips shooting something that happens really fast. We were doing some smoke grenades, so we had about a minute and a half to record a bunch of takes, and we only had, I think, like three or four of the smoke grenades. So what we ended up doing was partitioning these out into shorter clips. So we went to 1080 shooting 1,000 frames a second, and that gave us 22 seconds of record time. And then we partitioned the RAM internally to break that up into like five second chunks. So we had four five second chunks before that RAM filled up and then we had to save it out to a CFast card. So playing with these memory partitions can really help make your clip size smaller and not really need, like even in the 4K, you're shooting 
five and a half seconds or 5.7 seconds, but that's gonna be four minutes of footage. So if you can cut that in half, then you're only having to go through two minutes of footage and you can get two takes out of it. So I would definitely recommend playing around with the memory partitions and then saving those to those presets like we looked at earlier. So that's basically the main menu for setting up the camera. Once you have something recorded, you can jump into the playback menu by hitting the top button on the back here, and this will get you your cine list. This is all of the RAM partitions in the camera. We have four set up right now. The top one we have a clip recorded to and we're in playback mode. RAM two, if we switch over to that, it will get us to the live view, or it'll get us to a triggered buffer recording. And then if we go into RAM three and four, those are just gonna be live views. They're waiting for something to happen. So if we go into the clip here, we can click down on it with the scroll wheel and it'll give us a couple action options. We can play, delete, delete all or back. Play is going to give us the option to play that clip. Delete will delete that single clip. Delete all will clear all of the RAMs. So if they were all filled up, we could delete all of them at once. And then back will just back you out of this little menu. We're gonna hit play and now we're in playback. And then if we hit that jog wheel again, we're getting into another action menu and this is more clip specific. So here we're gonna have our set in and out points. So where we will actually wanna save the clip because there's a lot of footage here. We don't necessarily need to keep all of it. So we're gonna set our in and out points. We can reset the in and out points if we put them in the wrong spot. We can hit save to save all the frames off to our CF card or through the ethernet if you have ethernet hooked up. And then you can go forward and reverse to play the clip forward and also rewind it to find the perfect points that you wanna keep and then a back to back out of the menu. Something nice to know when you're using playback, you can actually use the two buttons underneath the playback button. There's one that goes backwards and one that goes forwards. If you click and hold them down while you're watching playback, it's actually gonna speed it up to close to real time, but allow you to jump through little parts without having to scrub through it and possibly skipping over it. Cause you can also scrub using the little dial underneath. So that's pretty much it. There's really not a ton of functionality you can do on the camera, but it gives you the basics to get set up and ready to shoot. If you wanna dive in more and do more of the custom setups, like setting up all of the SDI ports and programming those, you're gonna to have to do it through the PCC software, uh, which you can download on Phantom's website. The downside is it is only for Windows, so if you have a Mac, you're kind of out of luck with being able to do a ton of these extra features. So I hope this video helped you guys out and you got a little more information on how to navigate and operate one of these newer Phantom cameras where you can do a lot of the controls on the camera itself. If you guys have any questions about this camera or the menus, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see all the other Phantom videos that we're doing, go and check out our channel. There's gonna be some linked at the end of this video and in the description as well. We also have tons of videos on all other kinds of gear. So make sure to subscribe to the channel for new videos every single week and I'll see you in the next one.